if you're dyslexic, it's kind of your superpower. It's like the way that you think. Our brains, uh, they're wired to, I think, process information differently. It's just the way that you see the world. I don't think people do think the way I think. The way I see the world might be different from somebody else, but that's valid. In fact, it's vital. Dyslexics literally think differently. We have a different wiring of the brain, which means that we're really good at certain things, but we have real challenges at more traditional education and learning. The dyslexic brain actually processes information differently. So while it manifests itself in reading, writing, and spelling, and that's where it's most obvious, it's really a difference in how information comes into the brain and is processed which can create difficulties, certainly in an academic setting, but also amazing opportunities and abilities. Their minds work in very diverse ways. They're able to see the world in a way that we are not. So dyslexia is very common. We now know it's about one out of five students are dyslexic. So if you're a teacher, you've had a dyslexic student in your class. The strengths they have are incredible. The way they can think around things the ability to see the big picture. They are problem solvers, they are outside the box thinkers. Creative in the way that they can come up with solutions and ideas, but also in the way that they can invent new things. They are curious learners who are eager to explore. They have had to develop other alternative paths. So those elements of them often become then practiced, rehearsed and better functioning. They tend to be innovators, uh, they tend to be entrepreneurs. They're spirited, they're often really good with people. A lot of dyslexic learners tend to be daydreamers, uh, uh, but while they're sitting there, they're not uh, not paying attention or being disrespectful. Uh, oftentimes they're really coming up with in innovative solutions. Dyslexia is neurological. You could look at a dyslexic brain and you would see that it was behaving in a different way. The average thinker may get from A to B very quickly. It's like they're on a highway. But what I tell my students is that the dyslexic brain is more like you're taking the scenic route. And it may take them longer to get from A to B, but think of all the things they're going to see. We now know that uh, dyslexia is definitely genetic. And if a parent struggled with reading, if a parent had a difficult time in school, there's at least a 50% chance that their, their child is going to struggle as well. We also know that if a parent struggled and then a sibling is diagnosed with dyslexia, uh, the brother or sister has more than a 75% chance. So it is very important for parents to be aware, um, especially be looking for those signs early on with your child. We can start identifying uh, a child as being dyslexic really as early as four to five years old. I would be looking for a direct mismatch between what a student is capable of and what they know versus the output of learning. Students who are falling behind peers in letter recognition and matching sounds to letters um, or might be inconsistent in it. Big red flags for us for what we look for are the inability to name common objects quickly, to memorize things that seem every day and easy, um, days of the week, months of the year, putting the months of the year in order. Anything that requires retrieval, anything that requires remembering something instantly and bringing it back. It can affect how you work with numbers. It really affects how you sequence things. The earlier we can identify a child as dyslexic, and also the earlier we can help a child understand their strengths and weaknesses, the more of a profound impact that we can have. We need to be screening all students early and frequently. A dyslexic child should know they're dyslexic and they should know what dyslexia is and that is almost the most powerful thing that we can give them. It's empowering, that label's empowering because it stops being about you, it becomes about a difference, a different way of doing something. The parents knowing that a student is dyslexic really gives them the pathway to start walking down, that there's a direction that they can go in now. And for the teacher, it helps to know that there's a reason why they're not memorizing their spelling words, or there's a reason why they can't read. For decades, uh, really 50, 60 years, we've had a, a fairly solid understanding of what we need to do. What a dyslexic learner needs at the end of the day is a strong phonics instruction that's grounded in a multi-sensory approach. And by multi-sensory, what we mean is that we want to engage 
all the different senses or the way in which the brain learns and processes information. Anything you need to do to support a dyslexic child is great teaching practice for all children. No one suffers when we build classrooms to support dyslexic learners. In fact, everyone uh, is only made better because of it teachers, parents, employers, really the world needs to be more aware of the definition of dyslexia. To understand that a child is dyslexic is not rocket science. There are steps that we can take, there are screeners that we can begin to use, there are things that we can look for in order to recognize that this child thinks differently and that we need to provide them the support and the approach to education that resonates and makes sense to them. We want to be able to democratize this support and help teachers all around the world to be able to understand what dyslexia is, to understand the huge value of dyslexic thinking and the real importance of identifying it and supporting it early. Imagine a world where you've got, you know, a little, where you've got like a force of people who have this gift of dyslexia educated in a way that supports them. It means anything's possible, you know. It means anything is possible.